What's up everyone, I'm Nick, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about the binding property wrapper. And I would say that there are prerequisites to this video, and it's understanding the state property wrapper, which we did a couple of videos back, as well as how to extract subviews, which we did in the last video. So if you haven't watched those, I would recommend watching those first, and then coming back to this one. But if you're all caught up, you are obviously ready for this video. And basically we use a binding property wrapper to connect a state variable from the parent view to a child view. So for example, let's imagine we had a parent view here, which would maybe like the main screen. And that screen had a background color that was a state variable. And that state variable might change. And then we had a sub view. And that sub view could either be another screen or it could be just another button. But inside that sub view, we want to change the background color of the parent view. Well, somehow we would need to connect that background color that has that state property wrapper to our sub view so that inside the sub view, we could change the variable. And we do that by declaring the variable in our sub view with a binding property wrapper. And the binding just means that the state was declared somewhere else and we're connecting it to that state. So again, it sounds harder than it is, but I'm gonna show you guys real simply how to do it so you can become experts. So I'm back again in our Xcode project. As we always do, let's create a new file for this video. Right click the navigator, new file. And we're talking about bindings in this one. So it's gonna be a Swift UI view and let's call it binding bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once you're in that new file, click resume on the preview and let's get coding. I'm gonna start off by just creating a very simple view on our screen. Let's add a Z stack. Open the brackets, let's add a background layer. We'll do color.red. We'll do edges ignoring safe area so that it goes to the edges of the screen. And then let's add a button, we'll do button. Open the parentheses, I'm gonna use the action and label completion. Hit enter on the action to make it two lines. And on the button, let's just make it look a little better. We'll keep it saying button. Let's make the foreground white. We'll make the background color dot blue. Let's add some padding between these two. So before we add the background, we'll add padding. Let's add a little more horizontal padding. So we'll do padding. This time we'll do dot horizontal. So extra horizontal. And let's just give it some rounded corners with a corner radius of 10. So our button looks good. And when we click this button, let's change the color of the background. So we need a variable for the background color. We will do at state var background color of type color. And we'll start it equal to color dot green. We'll take this background color variable, put it into our code. So now when we click this button, we will change the background color to color dot orange. The color you use doesn't actually matter, obviously. And you should understand exactly what's going on here because we've covered Z stacks, background colors, states, all of this in previous videos. So I'm gonna click resume, hit play on the live preview. And when I click this button, the background color changes. Very, very simple. Now in the last video, we talked about extracting subviews. So we could take this button or we could take the content layer and put it into its own view. So let's do that again. And usually we can hold the command button, click the button and extract subview. But I'm gonna show you manually how to do that if you don't wanna use this shorthand completion. So down here at the bottom underneath this view, so this is where the view ends, I'm just going to recreate this struct basically. So it's gonna be a struct with a name and a view, open the brackets. We'll do struct uh, button view. It'll be of type view and we'll open the brackets. Now every view needs to have a body. That's what came by default when we started this file. So we'll just add in here, we'll add a body and we have a completion with some view. So that's exactly what we want, open the brackets and now we can fill in the body for what this button view is. So just like in the last video, we're gonna take this button and we're gonna give it its own, and we're gonna put it into its own view. So I'm gonna cut this button and I'm gonna paste it into the body here. 
So this is all the same as last video, except now we're running into an issue. And the issue is that this new view does not know what this background color variable is because we set this at state var background color in the first view, but we don't have that variable in the second view. So when we're calling that background color, we're getting this error, cannot find background color in scope. And this is going to be a very common situation in your apps. When you have a main view and then in a sub view like this button view, you want to change something in the main view. This is also the same format if you had a first screen and then you segued into a second screen. And when you're on the second screen, you wanted to change something back in the first screen. This is the same situation. So you have the background color, which is in our parent view here. And we want to change that background color by, by clicking something in our child view. So you might think that we could just do another at state var background color equals color green. But the problem is if we create another at state var, that's creating another new variable. And that would be separate from this background color. What we want to do is create a variable that's going to actually connect to this background color so that when we change this variable in here, it's actually changing our original background color variable. So what we're going to do instead of using at state, very simply, we'll use at binding var, and then we're going to call it background color in here. And you could change the name of this if you wanted to change what it's going to be called within this subview. But oftentimes it's pretty common to, just to use the same naming structure as the parent, the original variable. And all we need to do is tell this binding variable what type of variable it is, just like we do up here. So we'll do of type color. And now in the initializer of button view, every time we add button view, it's going to ask us, what is this background color variable that we want to connect to? So let's go and do that in our first view. So we're going to call button view here, button view. Open the parentheses, and now we have that initializer that I was just talking about. And you'll notice that it is a binding color. So we'll hit enter and binding is just a fancy way of saying that this variable is going to connect to a state variable that was declared somewhere else. So all we need to do is pass this variable and bind it into our new view. So to do binding, we will use the money sign and then we'll just add this variable, which is the background color. So now in our button view, this variable at binding background color is actually connected to this state variable up here. So when we change this background color in our view, which we're going to do when we click this button, it's actually going to change this at state variable at the top here. And we've connected it by using an at binding. So it might seem a little complicated, but all at binding really does is connect a variable in a child view to a state variable that was declared in a parent view. So let's go ahead and resume our canvas one more time. Let's click play on the live preview and we're going to click on our button. And when we click on our button down here, we're changing the background color again of this local variable, but this variable is binding to the state variable that was declared in our parent view. So when I click it behind the scenes, we're actually changing this variable, but this variable is actually connected to this variable and it all works. Sorry if I repeat myself, a lot of people get confused on how bindings work. So let's take this example a little bit further just to clarify everything. Now, if I also wanted to, when we click this button, change the background on the button, I could then just create that variable locally. So instead of having to create it up here in the parent view, because we don't have that color actually in this parent view, it's, it's only added down here in the child view. So I could do at state var, button color of type color and we'll set this equal to color dot blue when it starts and when we click this button let's also change the button color let's also change the button color equal to color dot uh, pink and we'll reference this state variable button color here so when we click the preview we can now click the button and you'll see that the button color is also changing but we've only added the state, we only reference the button color within this subview because it's only relevant to this little child. However, the background color is still within the parent view. Let's add a text to the Z stack as well. Let's put this button view into a V stack. 
And above the button view, let's add a title. We'll do text. This is the title. Let's do foreground color white. So right now it says this is the title, but let's make it a variable. Up here below the background color, let's call at state var title of type string equals title. We'll take this title, we'll reference it in this text here. Click resume to make sure we're all connected. It says title. And now when we click this button view, we want to change the title. So as you probably guessed already, if we go to change the title from our child view, let me click this button, we actually don't have a reference to this title state. So all we have to do is in the child, we'll add at binding var title of type string. And now when we initialize a button view, it's going to ask us to connect a variable to this title where it basically originates from. So we get this error here automatically. And when we go to fix it, already asking us for the title to bind to. So all we need to do is a money sign title. And now we have access to changing this title variable in our child view. So let's call title equals new title. And let's zoom out here. Let's press resume on the canvas. Try this one last time before I wrap up the video. When I click the button, we can see that the title changed, the background color changed, and the button color changed. But of course, the background color and the title are referenced in our parent view, which is this one. And the button color is only referenced in our child view. So this is efficient coding. This is how you connect variables from one screen or one view to another. You just use at binding. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. I apologize if this was way super beginner and you guys already knew this. I just wanted to show you the basics on how to connect state variables from view to view or screen to screen. And as we start making apps, we're going to use these states and bindings everywhere. So pretty important to get a good handle on how they work. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you guys in the next video.